Hey crew, it's Patrick. How are we doing today? All right. Long overdue, but finally we are getting into another bit of a uh, bit of work on my captain's log actual play. We are going to I am going to uh, get a couple things set up here. I have taken my picture off of this because really I mean, do you really need to see me uh, yammering? What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to... Okay, there's that. I'm going to get here. We can kind of remember what we are supposed to be doing. All right. At the end of our narrative, which is on my uh, archive of our own account, I will leave that link in the description. We had Captain Marshall getting to a turbo lift to go down and talk to uh, the ambassador slash secretary of state for the Federation about their diverting away from their mission to New Zindus to welcome the Zindi back into the Federation uh, because they have to investigate this temporal anomaly which we determined was about two kilometers in diameter and kind of skipping around at random intervals. And our uh, inciting incident, you know, that that's it. The first encounter we're going to wind up having is this uh, Klingon starship falling out of uh, I, I think we determined that it was uh, falling out but we also we did determine that it is where did my ship go where's my Klingon ship uh, there's the station there's the station commander where'd the Klingon ship go I know I made a... Ah, there it is. In plain sight. No wonder I can't find it. That's how my day is going. I don't know about you guys. Anyway, it's a Vorchok class cruiser from the 2370s. We determined that it was going to pop out of this temporal matrix at some point. But... We are working on we need to work on some of the actual story we i keep getting distracted this is one of the dangers of this game i keep getting distracted by little details like uh you know making the station and the station commander but i still have to name i'll worry about that later But let us figure out, okay. Uh, it's highly probable that it is going to just randomly pop out of this uh, temporal anomaly. Where'd my cheat sheet go? My cheat sheet disappeared. Hold on a moment. Fortunately, I have technology. The current page. Print it to my black and white printer. Okay. But since I've got the page right here, it is highly probable. So 1 to 18 is a yes. 1920 is a no. Roll to 12, yes, it's going to pop out of 
Which you know, makes sense. I don't think. Pops out of the temporal anomaly. Anyway, what? I can't. I, see, I get distracted. This is why this is a dangerous occupation for me to do these videos. I get distracted very easily. The reason you're not seeing my shining fuzzy face on the screen is it makes it easier to get both the uh, PDF for the Captain's Log rulebook and all my notes for the documentation. And if I try to find a place to squeeze my face in there, I start running out of room. I have to switch back and forth between the uh, the notes and the uh, and and the rules, and that's just not worth it. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, so probably get rid of this extra space here because I. It's going to pop out of the temporal anomaly. And as we already know, it's going to be perilously close to that deep space station that we built last video. So, they don't really have a, uh, a table for uh, creating crew complements for stations and starships. But that's what the internet's for. I learned that there's such a thing as memory gamma today. I'm not sure what it does, but there's such a thing as memory gamma. Your guess is as good as mine. So what I did was I went and I uh, googled how many people DS9 had since I'm using DS9 as a rough basis for uh, this space station. It's not going to look like it if I ever do art, but uh, anyway. It had a crew of about 300 plus families with Accommodation for Deep Space Nine had up to seven thousand passengers. You know, they're basically a hotel. That's a little more difficult to roll on a twenty-sided die. So I'm going to say it's going to population accommodations for five thousand. Current occupancy? Uh, I can do this on a 20-sided die easily enough because 5 goes into 20, so 1 to 4 is 1, etc., etc. Actually, I can break that down a little more. Uh, whatever comes up times 250... Tells me how many people are currently on this, how many uh, civilians are currently on the station. And, well, they kind of lucked out because there's only, I rolled a two, so there's only like 500 extra people. So you've got a crew of 300. Not all of them are going to have family, so we'll just say, for the sake of argument, 450. So they've got a total of 950. About a hundred and 
50. That's all approximate. That's all we need. Anyway, so, um, they have a small fleet of escort vessels uh, to help uh, convoys if needed. I'm going to guess... They have a discretionary fleet, mostly small vessels, runabout sized, but I'm going to guess they've got five starships for escort duty. Discretionary fleet. Lots of small craft. Run about size or smaller. Okay. Lots is a great catch all term. We don't really have to determine that. So, we'll worry about are any of the ships there? Considering they're escorting on trade routes, I was going to say it's probable that some or all of their ships are currently away from the station and I rolled a six so yes some or all of the ships are away from the station how many three away from station at the moment Okay. But I'm still getting ahead of myself. All right. So, we know the Secretary of State is very keen on the Zindi signing all these papers and getting back into the Federation. I'm going to say it's probable that she is going to be unhappy about the diversion. For which I rolled a two. Yeah, she's unhappy. Captain, this is very important to me. I really, really need this. But with her outlook of respecting the Federation and her tactics being science, she's going to understand the need to investigate this temporal anomaly, so she's probably going to be pretty understanding. And I rolled an 11 there, it's a 1 to 15 on the, the probable understanding of about the di diversion. But you know, it's not going to be that simple. He's got captain is going to have to make a rule. Stand by just a moment. Let me open up. Alright, that is going to be 
I'm going to say that is a presence, which he's got a nine, and a command, which he's got at four. Captain Marshall. Presence plus command task. Or to convince her. Target number is therefore 13, so I need 2d6. 20. 2d20. 2d6 is for. Oh, yeah. The weekend can't come soon enough. I rolled a 17 and a 1. So I've got a success. Success plus momentum. I don't think I'm going to do anything with that momentum right this instant, so I'm just going to highlight that I've got it. Okay. So now we know she's understanding about the diversion for the time being. All right. So let's, we know what their situation is. Well, let's get back to this Vorchoff for a minute that's coming out. All right. What do we know about this Vorchoff? Is it functional? I'm going to say that's highly improbable since it's supposed to be the uh, how, how the scarred remains so it's highly unlikely that there are any and there Having rolled a four on the highly improbable chart, there are, in fact, no life signs. No life signs. I'm going to say it is probable, considering that it is supposed to be the scarred remains and there are no life signs that is randomly popping out of this temporal anomaly and it is out of control. And I rolled 14. It is, in fact, out of control. Do, 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 highly improbable chance of. Oh, I have got to do better than this. Chance of survivors. I 
I think I rolled a four. I know I rolled that there were, that the table said there were no, so I'm just going to, is it out of control? I it, thought it probable. I rolled a 14 on that because I'm looking at it right now. Okay, so it is out of control. There are no life signs. Which is going to... prompt the station to contact the Seneschal as soon as it comes out of warp. Now let's go back up there. We'll read, put it all in the, under the encounter. Station will contact Seneschal once it comes out of warp. Okay. Now, a Vorcha attack cruiser scale five. It's a big old chunky ship. Seneschal scale four. It's tractor beam. Is pretty standard issue and can only and uh, is only power three. So okay, so they get there. We know the station. Commander is going to contact them. How big are the vessels she has left on station? They're probably escorts. They are probably no bigger than the scale three. I'm going to say it is probable, highly probable, that their Their stats are their their ships. I'm sorry, are scale three. So one to eighteen, they're scale three. Uh, nineteen or twenty, they are bigger. Well, they're all the seven. So we know that they're. Three are away from the station at the moment. Escort vessels scale three. Okay, so we know that we've got to do something. All right, so... They are going to have to either go on board and try to bring it under control, or between the escorts and the Seneschal itself, try to get their tractor beams to work together. That it sounds like a task for the ship. Once I don't, let's get to the ship. There's the Seneschal's sheet.
and okay so they're gonna go in there they're gonna talk with the commander Commander's going to inform them that they've got nearly a thousand people on the station right now, not counting the crews of these two starships. And they need to do something about this ship because it's on a collision course with the station and even with the station's shields up something that big could cause some serious problems so that's going to be So that's going to be a weapons. That's the tractor beam is classified in regular STA as one of the weapons of the ship. I'm going to call that a weapons plus security. Now, Let's get to All right. I've got 3 D20 because 32nd century ships have what's called Mtech And I used the best two to resolve the task. If the third die also scores a success, I get to add an advantage. Okay, so let me record that. I'm going to record that up as part of the encounter. Create some extra spaces here. Boom. Boom. I'll try to track or the Wacha to bring it under control. Weapons plus security task. TN. Let's see. It's uh, oh, stop. No, no. Now the weapons are six. Security is two. So that's TN eight. I got an ace. I got a twelve, and I got a six. Three successes. But 
tractor beam is not strong enough, the escort vessels are also going to have to make this roll. Strong enough. And since I don't have sheets for these scale three escort vessels, both escorts, I'm just going to say that it's the uh, Same task and target number. One of them scored, ouch, 11, 14, and 15. And the second one, got an eight, a nine, and a 17, one success. Okay. Was the first escort damaged in the attempt? Fifty fifty. And I roll the 15. No, not damaged. Although for narrative effect, they may have been shaken up a little bit. All right, and that is going to. So they are going to be able to bring this thing under control. Although we'll make it, you know, much more dramatic in the, in the narrative. But okay, I like it. I like it a lot. I like where this is going. But if you look at our. Uh, core game loop on page 238 if you get on you know the right document uh, so we Narrates to a task, we roll the dice, we determine the impact, and then we narrate the outcome. That's where we are. And then we'll go there. So let's uh, okay. So we're going to call this a successful scene. We didn't really do anything in the teaser, so but we just did this nice, successful scene. We've got all the notes here. I'll get that written up ASAP. Uh, wow. Okay, that worked out well. I'm, I'm 
kind of getting a feel for it. I've got some momentum that I'm saving up. Normally, I would say that with these three successes, I would have either more momentum or I'd have an advantage, but the... the... Oh, that's, what, that's something I need to figure out. Did this overtax... Did this over... First escort damaged in attempt. Nobody got a complication. So I'm not going to automatically, but I'm going to see if there was some strain or anything. Because this is a much bigger ship than any either of these uh, vessels are used to or technically even capable of dealing with. Okay, I rolled a 19. No, also not damaged. was the Seneschal damaged. Roll the 12. Same chance as the others. No, they did not. They did not uh, strain themselves or damage the tractor beam. in their attempt. End result. The Vorcha is brought under control. All right. And that is where I think we're going to leave off. And now I've got enough to write this scene for the narrative. I still don't have a title for this thing. But I'm hoping something will come to me. Guys, thank you so very much for sitting through this. Let me know if uh, this new video format works for you for most of these sessions because like I said I don't think you necessarily need to see my smile and face to do this kind of thing but let me know what you think let me know what you think of the story so far I'm hoping uh, to have I'm hoping to have the narrative up in the next day or so, you know, sometime this weekend. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for coming along. Uh, like the video. It helps get it out into the, uh, into the algorithm so that we can, uh, can do our thing. Start getting more views. Let your friends know. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ask them to subscribe. That also helps the channel. If you want to help the channel uh, in a financial sense, I have tip jars. They will be listed in the uh, in, in the description of the video. You don't have to do that, but it's always appreciated. You can also pick up uh, PDFs via my associate link on DriveThruRPG. That gets me a small commission in the form of store credit. And it doesn't cost you a single solitary extra cent. Again, you don't have to do that either. 
Although, as as with everything else, it is deeply appreciated if you do. Uh, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, ask your friends to come by. All of that helps us. Uh, we are in the 170s right now. Gun in for uh, 200 is our next subscriber goal. We may just, I don't know, maybe I'll do a, a live chat or something and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I don't know uh, what we'll do. I don't know what the plan's going to be. But we'll figure something out when the time comes. Thank you so much for coming by. Appreciate your time. Hope you're enjoying things. Uh, and uh, live long and prosper, guys. Thanks for coming by. Have a good one. Talk to you the next time.